grief is unending. Zetse says women's lives here are worth nothing. More and more gender-based violence stories are making headlines in South Africa. Three women have responded to this. I'm Trace, I'm 26 years old, or should I say young rather. I am the social and digital marketer for USA in South Africa. I live and breathe all things health and fitness. So I just love the way it makes me not only look but feel. Hi, I am Riza Tiana Vessels. I am an actress and oh, some interests that I have is reading, ice skating, watching TV, a lot of it. Well, I guess that's part of my job. <laughs> Amy Sharon. Um, I'm currently a fund manager in an employee benefits company. I've been in the industry for more than 20 years. I'm a mother of three girls, no sons. My name is Doreen Naidu. I am a media producer and my interests are usually anything to do with film. I like baking, I like anime. I would regard myself a geek, I think, but all of those worlds are me. My name is Shante and I work as an accountant. My hobbies, I like reading advocate for suicide awareness and people who suffer with depression. My name is Reshma Lala and I am a user experience analyst slash designer. Also a part-time entrepreneur, so like a little cake boss situation going on there. Um, so it's a part-time pastry chef. I started a business about three and a half years ago called Work Love at First Bites. My name is Bobilla. I'm 26 years old. I live in Pretoria. I am a comms and marketing officer. And my interests, this makes me sound a bit basic, but I love all things fashion, food, um, reading, music. I obsess over those quite a lot. <laughs> I think all women are very interesting, but obviously being a South African and looking at South African women, I think it's just the love they have for each other and the support they give each other, which is amazing because sometimes you see that women don't support each other and that's really sad. And I've seen with the South African women, we tend to love and support each other no matter where we are in the world. It's amazing. I do think that our women are very, very resilient. They're very adaptive and I feel like a South African woman can be given any sort of situation or be put into very sticky situations and very easily come out of it. There will be pain and there will be tears, but I do feel we are unique in that way. South African women are very diverse, so you get a lot of different cultures, backgrounds. You get white, black, big, fat, old, young. And I think everybody together brings a little something into the country or from their background that makes you know, everybody's so special. I think it's perseverance. I think women have, especially women in South Africa, have had a long history of tenacity and never giving up and believing what they want. And I think that makes us very strong, especially throughout all races. We've been through a lot. And I think having that we'll never give up moment really makes us different from other most. And we're very beautiful, so that's a point too. <laughs> I think the South African woman is incredibly resilient. She is smart, she is creative, and she's just wholesome. You know, I mean, I'm not that well traveled yet, so I can't really compare from other places, but really the women in this country are so colorful and it's, it's beautiful to, to witness. South African women don't know the word give up. They go ahead despite circumstances and they give it their best shot until they get it right. Okay, so from my grandmother, obviously in the olden days, as we say it, um, women were very domesticated. So they were classified as being women in the kitchen and looking after the children. My grandma would be super, super strict about like, dress this way, do it this way, because that's just how women are supposed to be. That's how it's, it's changed. It's not where women need to sit at home and look after the kids. Women need to go out there and start looking after their families and providing for their families. I can still be a woman even if I do something in a certain way. It doesn't make me less of a woman. Uh, my grandmother and my mother, they're very strong women. They don't take nonsense from anybody. And I really admire that. I feel like 
the whole patriarchy thing kind of died out as women are more educated, more susceptible to knowing what they want and standing their ground. I think some of the societal changes that I've noticed are that women can now do the same jobs as men. I think before we were seen as unequal and now it's almost like we can do what men can do and that's really powerful. If they learn from us and we learn from them and it's a partnership. It's, it's not transactional. So there, there has been a lot of change and I would say that um, it's got a lot of better, it's got a lot better. I feel like women love to do things that people say they can't. So if you tell a woman you cannot be a doctor or if you're in a specific field and you can't be the boss in that field, they want to prove you wrong. And I think it's a good thing because they are, there's nothing that a man can do that a woman cannot do. Maybe a man can do it better because of physical appearance, maybe, but mentally and like work-wise, there's every, anything a man can do, a woman can do as well. There's like a secret code in the media industry, like where they deem like a lot of men have to handle the technical side, the cameras and sounds and grips and lights, where women were usually put on the admin side with like producing and makeup and costumes. But recently I've noticed a lot of people are blurring their lines. I know a lot of female cinematographers who are like amazing and they don't jeopardize the femininity just to accommodate the men um, environment. Um, women do what they love now and what they wanted to always do, maybe because their parents couldn't do it or circumstances have changed. So I think following their dreams and just pursuing what makes them happy makes them go far. They've sort of broken down the barriers. If a woman has grown up and they have an interest in civil engineering, guess what that woman is going to do now? You know, she's going to align herself, she's going to educate herself and make sure that once she enters a male dominated space, she is well versed and, you know, can, can handle whatever is thrown at her. And that's what I also love just about women just kicking ass all the time. I've had so many friends who were scared that if they came forward, they were, it would, someone would victim blame them, their own families would victim blame them because, oh, it's what you wore or it's what you said. I've had several in incidents in my life that I never told because I was in internship. If I spoke, I was scared I was going to lose my internship. I was scared I was going to lose my education because if you speak, there are consequences to it. And there's never consequences to the guy. They'd be like, oh, slap on the wrist. It was a one-time thing. It'll never happen again. But for you, you're labeled as someone to the advantage of you, like your unwanted goods, which is ridiculous. I think it's important if we speak about it, like, what is violence? Because if we understand what violence is, like, then we can definitely go deeper into it and be like, there's so many women and children being abused violently. How do we stop that? How do we change that? Um, and because it's being kept under the carpet, like, let's well, leave it one side, let's leave it one side. We're not dealing with it. And if we're not dealing with some something, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to fix something. And we're not gonna be able to realize, oh wow, there's actually a deeper issue here. How are we gonna fix this? How are we gonna be able to heal? from that because we're not healing, because we're not talking about it. If someone's in a situation, they need to understand that you need to tell your story. Okay? Stories are powerful. They can heal the broken and they can really help you move forward. And I think that by telling your story, somebody else might you know, relate to it and be like, you know what, I'm in the same situation and this is what you've done and this is what's happened and it's okay to feel how I'm feeling. Like, Stories are so powerful and just your voice to be heard is a gift, you know, and somebody else out there might need to hear it. Okay, so in the Indian community, if you're married, you stay married. Uh, nobody really wants to hear about how your husband is beating you up at home or how he's physically and mentally abusing you or financially abusing you or whatever the case is. But you never ever know what happens behind closed doors. So fair enough, it's okay, you know, this person looks amazing, they're such a a wonderful husband, they give you money, they do whatever, nobody sees that he's beating you up behind the shower curtain or he's abusing you mentally. It's, it's a very tricky situation, so a lot of women don't want to speak about it. They'd rather just keep quiet because there's a whole bunch of factors that factor into this gender-based violence issue. Gender-based violence is something 
that I see as not only physical. Um, Gender-based violence for me is something that most women go through um, emotionally, mentally, physically, it could be in any form. And at every step and every point in time, we have a choice. And life is all about choices. So you have three choices. You can choose to stay the same and stay in your situation. You can choose to change, you know, or you can choose to just walk away, you know, just walk away from something that no longer serves you. Number one, it was traumatic to open a, an actual court case, uh, or, or, I mean a case number, you get pushed from one pillar to the other. You have to repeat yourself to five different people before uh, actually getting attention. To get a case number took us a year to get a case number for the thing. So that's demotivating because you feel, you know, I should have rather kept quiet and nothing would have happened. So yes, people push things under the carpet because it doesn't get the urgency it deserves. The problem with GBV is that it is so layered. That's what people don't understand. And while there may be the physical part of it, the physical abuse, more often than not, there is the emotional uh, manipulation and the emotional abuse. That whole, I'm scared of you know, ruining the reputation of other people is part of the emotional um, part that you go through with battling to blame yourself and, and seeing how you can actually get out of the situation. So it does really add on to, to the struggle on, of overcoming GBD. Um, no woman asks to be abused, doesn't matter what she wears, um, I mean I could dress full on and I'd still get people telling me, you know, like cat calling me and whatever, like obviously I just put it aside like I don't care about it, but at the end of the day, yeah, people, it's easy to say that, yeah, she deserved it. It's not okay to say that because we're saying, if women dress this, this and this way, if women speak this and this and this way, yeah, they asked for it. We don't know what that person was thinking, where that person is coming from. So we can't go and say that because you are like that, you are that type of person. So you should not be saying, you know, she has been asking for this sort of behavior. It can never ever be the victim's fault. And I think that perpetuates this thing where it makes it so difficult for a woman to even come out and tell her story because it, it was me, it was my fault. I shouldn't have been there. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have worn that. And it just, it piles on. And how is a person supposed to even heal from such an ordeal because they're so busy blaming themselves for something that they shouldn't? I believe that women should be allowed to dress uh, the way they want to dress. They should be allowed to be wherever they want to be. I don't think it's fair that you say, okay, a guy can wear, walk around shirtless, but if a woman decides to wear a crop top and short shorts, it's not okay. Like it's not what you ask, it's how you perceive it. So if you see a beautiful woman in a short skirt, she can look amazing, she's got a model body, but what is a man seeing it as? Is he seeing it as a sexual predator that now he needs to go against, uh, you know, and take advantage? So again, it's women get prejudiced for things where they're loving their own thing, but it's not actually them. If I walk late or if I go out late because I'm a shift and I'm wearing something that's not deemed right, I do have had experiences where men would be like, okay, it's time to take advantage of you. Without me asking it, if I smile, it thinks it's flirting. If I, you know, say a joke or I listen to you, it feels like flirting. There's so many tiny things that misconstrued that men take. And I feel like, why do we have to train girls to be fearful where we could train men to be more respectful. I feel like you need to let people know that they're not alone, that there's means for them to get help. Like I said, a lot of women stay in situations because they feel they have no one. And if you make various avenues available to say, hey, you know what, I'm here to help. And I feel like sharing your story especially when it comes to like gender-based violence, rape, abuse, anything of that sort. It helps people in the same situation know that they can get out and they can get help and it doesn't have to stay that way. I was in a position of power. I would love to, instead of just teaching maths and English and science in school, I would actually make it part of the curriculum to introduce self-defense courses. 
I would make sure that kids know how it is, what is emotional blackmail, what is it to be happy, what is love thyself, you know, all these terms and memes that we see on Facebook and everything, what is all of that, what, are, like, what does it fundamentally mean? To create awareness is the first step to in creating the change and then hearing people's stories that's a whole other pathway, a whole different movement. You know, you connect with people on an emotional level. You know, you, you really get to understand what's happening to them, how they're feeling, and you just want to start supporting them. You know, seeing the change, making the change, be the change, you know? So I think ways that we can make people aware of it is if we speak more often about it. And start from a child's viewpoint. I mean, there are so many boys out there that don't even have a mom or a dad. And sometimes not having a dad in the picture is sometimes bad. So I think it's very important that if I were empower that to speak on these things, speak on issues that kids need a father in their life, kids need a dad, and that we need to be able to speak about violence. Like what is violence overall? Because if we understand what violence is, then yes, we can definitely start challenging those gender-based violence situations. Because I don't think people understand what violence is. And that, that for me is a major issue. I think as a country, we continuously let our women down. And most women don't even report their, you know, their encounters. And that's because one, they don't feel safe. Two, they don't trust um, the fact that there are institutions in place that are supposed to take care of them and protect them. Um, and I say the speaking leading to our police department, you know, it's, it's it's so sad that the one place that you are supposed to, not the one place, but the main place where you're supposed to go to seek help and seek justice for, for yourself, doesn't offer that. They aren't quick to respond. They, you know, they might not even file your case because no, you are married, so you need to deal with that domestically, you know, within your relationship. So I think it would be so great to have a department, a team, a something together that is dedicated specifically to women's rights, to children's rights, to G handling GBV. People who are trained to know what exactly to do as soon as a woman comes in to report a case. Definitely the police system needs to be corrected. I did a whole article on gender-based violence in Brahm and the first thing police people do is blame the girl like oh where were you what were you wearing why did you call for help like how am i supposed to know i was gonna get assaulted 10 minutes before it happened like you don't know these things and i feel like there should be harsher crimes i'm not saying bring the death penalty back but i'm saying bring something harsher so the men won't feel like they can get away with anything they want to and then also even women if they call false rape they should be also implications for that too. I feel that the police force should stop worrying about speeding fines and worry more about what's happening to our boys and girls. I would say love themselves. We grow up during puberty having such low self-esteem thinking we're not good enough. And I feel like girls need to stop loving themselves more. The doll on doll hate needs to stop, that's for sure. But I feel like if a girl starts loving herself and the girl starts knowing that she's worth it, then she's capable of doing anything. Don't be afraid to be who you are and say what you feel. Somebody might not agree with it at the end of the day, but always stay true to who you are. At the end of the day, you are your number one. Look after you, go for what you want, let nothing in this world stop you, and you will have the time of your life. Life is an adventure. Stay true to yourself. That is, it's, it's so important to not get swayed by different things and different influences. Stay true to yourself and your instincts and there is nothing that you cannot do. Be yourself. Like I feel in today's society, it's so easy to conform to what everyone wants you to be. And if you're busy conforming, you're missing out on so much that you're meant to achieve and so much you're supposed to like develop character-wise and emotionally and building yourself up, you miss out on all those things. Don't live in a life full of limitations. Know that there's always an out. Know that you get to decide at every point in time what you want. A little bit of self-love, if you have a little bit of confidence, that's power. 
that is creating a little bit, a little dynamite package that's going to explode into something beautiful. Trust yourself. Trust your gut instinct. Love. Love yourself, love other women, and then love each other. Just remember, empowered women, empower women. 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 Empowered women, empower women.